Hey guys, welcome back. So today's find is this Husky generator. It was listed on Craigslist for only $75, and in the description stated that this has not been used since Hurricane Irene, which at this point was over 10 years ago. It also said that it most likely needs a new carburetor. And, you know, I'm not so sure it does because when I look in the tank, it's actually dry and clean. Also, the fuel shutoff is turned off. So there's a good chance that this carburetor actually is in good shape. But whether it is or not doesn't matter because there's a more serious problem. Let me show you. When pulling this engine over, I can tell there's very little compression. You know, at some point, I should hit the compression stroke and the engine stop advancing unless I apply more pressure, but in this case, it keeps going. And I don't want to say the compression zero. I do feel something, but I think it's way too low. So I'm going to start by getting the compression tester on there and seeing where we're at. Doesn't look too bad. All right, place your bets. I say 20. higher than I thought. We're at 30 PSI. That's not great, but it's not hopeless either. The valves could be misadjusted if that exhaust valve is too tight. That could definitely cause this. Anyway, at 30 PSI, I'm not sure this engine will start. Hey, fly. So let's pull the valve cover and just check the valve lash. This is a Subaru EX13 engine. This is one of my favorite engines. You can see it's very different design up here. We have a chain driven cam, but these tend to be very reliable. Anyway, let's rotate the engine. I just wanna look at the valves, make sure they're moving. And when one is pressed all the way in, we'll check the clearance on the other. All right, I think that's the intake on the bottom. Plenty of clearance. And the clearance on the exhaust seems fine as well. So there's really not much more I can do from out here. I think I'm just going to put the cover back on and we'll try to start it.
Gonna check for spark while we're here. Just make sure the plug is sparking and that it's a strong spark. Yeah, and that's a strong spark. Saw it clear as day on the plug and lit up the light really well. So I think you know what's next. Might try spraying a little bit of starting fluid in there and see if we get any signs of life. But first, let's check that oil. Yeah, it's a bit low. So we'll top that off then try starting it. Nice. The engine runs. Granted, it seemed a little bit lazy, so potentially we will be down on power, but I want to get that carb cleaned up next so we can run it longer and do some load testing to see if this engine is putting out enough power to support its rated capacity. Well, there's no fuel in that carburetor, but if you look at the tip, it's covered in rust. So most likely, the bowl looks like that as well. Carburetor definitely needs to come off. I think the best bet to get the carburetor off is to just remove these Torx screws. There's four of them. Once those are out, we can kind of slide this panel out of the way and then focus in on getting that air box and carb uninstalled. On second thought, I think I'm gonna remove this panel altogether. So we'll just cut the cord, reattach the handle on the other side, and also get this side panel off. So that way we'll have full access to everything.
tight. So much for saving that gasket. It's almost impossible to save one of these gaskets on a Subaru engine, so no big surprise. Uh, I think I see the problem. The stud on the left is bent, and that's why the airbox was so hard to get off. So I'm not expecting this carb to come off without removing that stud first, but let's give it a try. Yeah, that stud has to be pulled. So I'm gonna to try to double nut it, see if we can't get it to spin out. And the idea behind this is that you wanna tighten these two against each other and then use the inner one to turn out and actually keep the wrench on the outer one trying to keep that those these two tight there we go That one might be bent too. It's not feeling good. Hope I don't break it. <laughs> it's gonna break. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna go back to trying to get the carb off. This stud isn't bent severely, 
So I might have better luck getting the car past it. Yeah, it surprises me that this happened. I mean, this generator is pretty well protected and the airbox was installed, so don't have a good explanation for this, but at least we have options now. I can hit this with heat if I want to, and it's not that bent. Potentially, I could straighten it just a bit, and that's all we need. It's actually a good sign. Looks respectable. Okay. Not too bad, actually. I mean, the bottom of the bowl has some rust and a lot of dust, but nothing catastrophic like I was thinking. You know, the needle's free. Yeah, overall, not too bad. So I think this one can be cleaned up and saved. You know, as far as what to do with that stud, I'm not sure. I'm going to give it some thought. So it's actually the next day. I wanted to give this one a bit of thought before making a terrible mistake. So I did try putting the carburetor back on over that stud that is stuck and it goes on. So I think I'm going to leave good enough alone. Worst case, I can extract it, but I don't want to push my luck. I think it'll work as is. Now, as far as the other stud goes, I did actually put this in the vise and straightened it a bit. It's not perfect, but I'd say it is usable, worst case. Uh, this part is still available. I took a look. It's about $6 plus tax and shipping. I think the worst part, though, is that this is a special order item. It'll be at least three weeks before I see it. So I made a trip to the hardware store and... They had automotive studs, but they were not long enough, like not even close. But I did find an M6 1.0 bolt that is the right length. So if I cut the head off, this should be fine to use. And I got an extra just in case I messed this one up. I mean, worst case, I don't even have to cut that head off. I can just use a spacer and torque it down like that. But we'll try to make it right and go from there. Now, as far as the carb goes, I'm going to clean this like normal. We'll put it in the ultrasonic. The bowl, I'm actually thinking I might soak this in some Evaporust for a bit. So I'm going to get this soaking right now. We'll let that sit for a few hours, and then while that's soaking, we'll clean up the carb.
the pin on these Makunis only comes out one way and they're in there pretty tight. So you do need to be careful. You could break these legs right here. All right, I'm gonna leave the pilot jet alone for now. It is not coming out. We also have the main jet down here, which is very small. So you gotta be careful with it. Yeah, and that's gonna strip out as well. So I'm gonna leave that alone. The emulsion tube on this is pressed in, it's not removable anyway, but we can clean it like that. That's not a big deal. I think the pilot jet is the bigger deal. I do wanna get that out and cleaned up, but I think we'll soak it first and try it again. Yeah, this carb isn't looking too good. The throttle plate is stuck. Neither jet will come out. It's not to say it won't run, but it may not run. Anyway, that's all I can do for now. I am gonna soak it. We'll try the throttle plate after a bit and we'll try that pilot jet again. You know, if those don't free up, not sure it's really worth proceeding on this carb. Well, the carburetor itself is cleaning up pretty well, but both the jets are still stuck. And more importantly, that throttle plate, it won't budge. You know, I can't get it to move. And potentially if I keep working at it, it might free up. But I've already looked on Amazon. There is a clone option available for $37. So that's been ordered and on its way. And as far as the bowl goes, it's been in the evapor rust for about four hours and it is cleaning up. You know, I can see if I leave it in there a bit longer, this should be fine. So I am gonna keep this stuff soaking as a plan B, but I think the clone has a better chance of working. So it's gonna be a few days before that carb shows up. I'm just gonna do all the prep work I can, which really isn't much other than making the stud. And actually I need to make a gasket. The new carb does come with the gaskets for either side of the insulator, but we also need one between the carburetor and the airbox.
Perfect. Yeah, after three more hours of soaking, it it didn't solve the problem. I did get the pilot jet out actually, but throttle plate is still stuck, and I think I made things worse. This piece up here is just a piece of plastic pressed onto the shaft, and I did manage to turn this, but still no joy on the plate. Anyway, this isn't completely useless. It has a lot of good parts and also has the template of the gasket I need to make. So I already transferred that shape onto a piece of paper and cut it out. For the most part, it came out well. There are a few adjustments I wanted to make here, so I just kind of marked it. Anyway, I'm gonna get a piece of gasket material and we'll start with the center hole and then just work our way out. That should work fine. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is on the airbox side of things, but with the way this is, I think it'll make a good seal. 48 hours later, courtesy of Amazon, we have the carburetor and all the accessories. So I guess we'll bolt it on and see if it works. Just going to hook up this switch. This actually goes to a storm responder generator, but it'll do the job 
to kill the engine. All right, let's see how this thing does. I've got the light hooked up and the fuel plumbed in. Let's get this thing started and just verify that we have power and that the clone can run this engine properly. Nice. It started, we got power, and it seems like the clone's doing a good job. So I'm going to grab a space heater. We'll do another quick test just with 800 watts and see how it does. Well, that test told me a lot. The engine is doing fine. I handled the 800 watts with minimal loss in engine speed. So I think the low compression is probably just the compression release. It is a bit aggressive, potentially increasing the valve clearance on the exhaust side could fix the issue, but I did check the clearance before putting that cover back on and the clearance was pretty much dead on. So I think I'm gonna leave good enough alone. We'll just get the engine oil changed throw that air box back on, and we'll get it outside for a proper test. Looks like the new clone has a bit of an issue, so we'll get that off, we'll put it up on the bench, maybe we can get some of the parts out of the old carb to make this one work a little bit better. There are some bits of debris in that bowl. They're very small and hard to see. So potentially it came from that fuel line. I did flush it out before connecting it to the carb, but that is a possibility. Also, it could just be leftovers from machining, but the seat looks okay. And the needle looks pretty good too. So I'm just gonna clean the bowl up, put it back together. We'll give this a second chance.
in case you're wondering, I left this bowl soaking for about four days and it did a good job. It dissolved all the rust. We're just left with some pitting and discoloration, but it's perfectly usable in a carb. Looks like we're all set. It's been about 10 minutes. Carburetor's not flooding over anymore. And this one I think is my fault. The test tank, when I went to go put fuel in it, I noticed had a bunch of debris, little bits of debris in the bottom. So cleaned it out the best I could and added a new fuel filter. So I think we're good to proceed. I'm just going to start this and let it run for a while. I want the engine to warm up, and once it does, I'll double check that engine speed and bring it up to 61.5 hertz if needed. Uh, then I'll load test it and see how it does. All right, not too bad. It started second pull and the engine continues to run well. So 
I let it warm up for actually closer to 10 minutes and double checked that engine speed. Didn't change much, we were still holding at around 60 hertz. So I bumped that up to 61 and a half hertz, loaded it to 1500 watts, which is pretty much close to the max on this generator. And it held just fine at 60 hertz. So the engine definitely is not down on power. In fact, it's doing quite well. So I wanna get this back inside, just finished putting it together. But before I do that, I wanna get the oscilloscope out and hook it up. This is a brushless generator. And I could see looking at the light, it flickering a bit, like pulsating. So I'm sure the power is far from clean. I just wanna get a visual on it to see kind of where we're at. That was pretty bad. I mean, brushless generators are the dirtiest power producers, but I didn't expect it to be as bad as it was. Anyway, putting an 800 watt load on it did smooth that sine wave out quite a bit. There was still a pretty significant deviation from where it should be, but yeah, I guess the point is if you have a brushless generator, you wanna think twice about hooking it up to something you care about because you might damage it. Anyway, enough blabbing. Let's get back inside and finish this up. And that pretty much does it, guys. I mean, this one was supposed to be an easy one, and it was, but there were a few curveballs thrown along the way. But in the end, it worked out pretty well. I mean, the engine starts, it sounds good, and 
it makes power. Granted, dirty power, but you know, it's doing exactly what it was designed to do. So I hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching.